What is up Broncos fans, the Denver Broncos show back here again to do another video. In this video, I'm going to talk about some of the additions and signings that the Broncos made during free agency last week. Also give my thoughts on the Elvis Doomerville situation. Obviously the Broncos did release Elvis Doomerville. Just going to give my thoughts on that and how that all went down. And again, talk about some of the additions we made. I'm, I'm really excited about some of the signings we made. The whole goal during free agency and, and during the offseason is to improve as a team. And I definitely think we improved greatly as a team with a lot of the guys we brought in. So I'm going to give my, my take on that. Again, this video is late. A lot of these the, these signings and, and Doomerville's release came last week. So I do apologize for the video but being late. But regards to that, just uh, again, excited right now as a Broncos fan where we've made some really good additions and uh, you know I'm really looking forward to next year. Alright so the first signing I'm going to talk about is is obviously the, the addition of Wes Welker to the team. Uh, if you haven't heard by now which I'm sure all of you have, Wes Welker signed a two year $12 million deal with the Broncos. I believe it was last Wednesday or Thursday. A uh, huge addition. I, I never saw this coming. I, I don't think any Broncos fans out there were expecting us to get, get Wes Welker. I was really uh, uh, thinking and expecting Wes Welker to end up uh, remaining with the New England Patriots. A Super Bowl type move. I mean, adding Wes Welker on our offense is is just huge. It makes us even more dangerous. I think we went, we're went. we going to go from a very good offense to a great offense now with Wes Welker in the fold. And it's a huge addition in the sense that it's a big subtraction from New England. And obviously New England is a big rival of ours. They're, they're right there with us as one of the top teams in the AFC, you know, competing for that AFC championship. And, and to steal Wes Welker from them and to get Welker from them, that's huge for us. So uh, this is a great addition. Really happy to have Wes Welker. Uh, to, to add arguably the best slot receiver ever in the NFL to your offense is, is huge. We needed a slot receiver. And now with him in the slot, Decker and Thomas on the outside, we just really have a potent receiving core. And we're definitely a better offense today than we were last season. So you got to love that. Uh, we look at what Wes Welker's done over the, the course of his career. He's only 31 years old, so he's still young. He's still got a couple really good years left. This is a really tough receiver. Definitely not afraid to go over the middle. He's taken his fair share of hits throughout his career. And f in five of the last six seasons, he's had at least 110 catches or more. That's just ridiculous. The guy is 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 a catching machine. He's averaged 11 two-point yards per catch throughout his career. He's got some value in the return game as well. It'll be interesting to see if the Broncos maybe put him uh, back there as a, our punt returner. I think Trenton Holiday will probably remain, you know, our primary returner. But Welker definitely had some, you know, he has some value there in the return game. And and again, he's just a great addition in the slot. He's going to be a safety blanket for Peyton Manning. He's going to be our go-to guy on third downs. You're getting a guy here in Welker who's very quick. He's explosive. He's not the fastest guy, but he's he's one of those guys that is quick in short areas. He does a great job of finding the soft spots and zones. Um, and again, he, he also gives us some value in the screen game. Wes Welker's a guy who can take a little, you know, two three yard screen and, and turn it upfield for 15 20 yards. He's had over 1300 yards in three of his last four seasons with New England. He's had 26 touchdowns in his last four seasons with New England. Obviously, was Brady's go-to guy. Um, and again, this is a huge move because it weakens one of our biggest competitors in New England. And it, it just it, it makes us so much more dynamic and so much tougher to, to cover uh, on the offensive side of the ball. And, and giving Peyton Manning another uh, you know weapon to utilize and to give him a guy like Wes Welker is just going to be great. I think Wes Welker next season is going to get 100 catches in his sleep with Peyton Manning. I think, again, he's going to become that safety blanket for Peyton Manning. And the great thing about Wes Welker is, again, he's such a smart player. He's such a tough player. He does a great job of just really finding the, the soft spots and coverages and zones. And, and he just he has a knack for getting open. He's got great hands. And, uh, you know, a lot of people have said he's a system player and kind of, you know, down, downgraded this signing. But when Wes Welker catches 100 passes next year, you could talk about him being a system player. I mean, this guy is, is an extremely talented player. For us to get him at the bargain that we got, you know, two-year, $12 million deal, only $6 million per season, I think is, you know, just a brilliant move by Elway and John Fox and the rest of our front office people. And I think Welker's a huge addition. Makes us more explosive, more dynamic on the offensive end. He adds value in the return game and the screen game. And this is a guy that, you know, he'll take a little five-yard slant pass or a little screen, you know, two, three-yard screen pass, and he'll turn it up the field for 15, 20 yards. And on third down, we're going to virtually be unstoppable. I mean, adding Welker in the slot, if you come over to double team him in the slot, you're going to leave Decker or Thomas one-on-one. -on -one. There's just so many possibilities now on the offensive end. And this is a huge move. Very happy to 
to have Wes Welker on the team, and I think he's going to do big things for us next season, and, and I'm really happy to have him here in Denver. Never thought this was possible, but uh, it's great that he's here, and can't wait to see what he does with Peyton Manning next season in the orange and blue. Uh, we signed defensive tackle Terrence Knighton to a two-year, $4.5 million deal. Uh, he's only 26 years old, spent a couple seasons with Jacksonville. He actually played under Jack Del Rio when he was the head coach in Jacksonville. He's now obviously our defensive coordinator, so he got some familiarity there, which is good. And uh, Terrence Knighton, I think, is a, a great addition to our team. He's a young guy. He's only 26 years old, so there's still some upside, some potential with him, which you like. He's 330 pounds, so he adds some size, some bulk to our defensive line, which is what we need. And this is a guy that's stout against the run. We definitely need that. We desperately need that. We need a big body up front to take up some space, help you know a guy like Vaughn Miller uh, take a little pressure off him when he's getting double teamed all the time, getting a big body up there up front like Terrence Knighton. We'll hope, hopefully open up some more one-on-ones for Von Miller on the outside. And uh, again, you know, we, we really struggled in that game against Baltimore, stopping them, stopping their run game, stopping Ray Rice. We had a couple third and shorts where they uh, they got on us. And, and, and physically, we got beat up uh, up front, our defensive line, by their offensive line. So to add a, a big defensive tackle like this in Terrence Knight, who's still young, who has some familiarity with, with Coach Del Rio, who's 330 pounds. We re-signed Kevin Vickerson. I mean, we now, we have Derek Wolf uh, up front. We now have some, some nice side some nice bulk up front um, for our interior defensive line. I think we're, we're going to be much better against the run now on a guy like Knighton. And this guy that's also a very, very good athlete, very quick for his size. So I think Knighton is, is maybe a, a signing that you know Broncos fans aren't too excited about, but I think he's a big addition to our defense. And uh, anytime you can add a, a 330-pound defensive tackle who's only 26 years old, sign him on a very cheap deal. Um, and a guy that's a good athlete and stout against the run, that's always a plus, especially for our defense. So definitely happy to have Terrence Knighton on board and, and looking forward to seeing what he does next season. Broncos also signed linebacker Stuart Bradley. He's 29 years old. We signed him to a one-year $1.2 million deal. Um, I, I don't think he's going to be a big contributor early on. I think he's going to be kind of a core special teams player. Uh, he's 29 years old. He adds depth to our linebacking core, which we need. Uh, he actually tore his ACL in 2009, so that's a little bit of concern. He actually struggled uh, with Arizona when they were playing the 3-4. He only had 42 tackles in two seasons with Arizona, but his last year in the 4-3 scheme, which is obviously what we run uh, when he played with Philadelphia, this is before he tore his ACL. He finished with 108 tackles, one sack, one pick, and one forced fumble in 2008. So this is a guy that can very can be a productive player in the 4-3 scheme. Again, the ACL worries me a little bit, but this is a veteran player. He adds depth and competition to our linebacking core. And again, I think he'll he'll be more of a core special teams player, but definitely a guy that has a chance to, to be uh, you know our starting inside linebacker this year, and a guy that you know has proven success, success excuse me playing in a 4-3 scheme. So be interesting to see uh, how Stuart Bradley fits in with our defense and, and within our linebacking core next season. Now the next signing we made, next addition we made, this was a uh, kind of a surprise for me, just like the Welker signing, we were able to sign defensive back Dominique rogers Camardi to a one-year $5 million deal, very similar contract to the one that we uh, signed Tracy Porter to last offseason. Obviously, that didn't really work out with Tracy Porter. He had some injury issues, some seizure uh, He was having seizures and, and had some issues with that, and uh, apparently got uh, outplayed in practice by Chris Harris and Tony Carter and just really didn't live up to expectations. Broncos obviously cut him. There was a need for a number two corner, and, and I like this addition. We went out and got Rodgers um and, and hopefully he'll be able to uh, perform and, and live up to expectations much better than Tracy Porter did and, and stay healthy and play well and hopefully give us that number two corner that we, we've desperately been looking for to put next to Champ Bailey, take some pressure off Champ. Um, and there's a lot to like about Rodgers Camardi. He's got a ton of upside. He's only 26 years old, so he's still pretty young. Uh, he was a pro bowler back in 2000. 2009 with Arizona. During that season, he had 50 tackles, 25 pass deflection, deflection six interceptions, three forced fumbles, and a t uh, one touchdown, uh, one interception return for a touch. He's a big defensive back at six foot two inches, so you like that. Add some size to our secondary, which you like seeing. Um, and and you know I, I'm looking forward to seeing what uh, Rogers Camardi does. I like his game. I like what he brings to the table. I mean, even though he underwhelmed in Philadelphia last season, like I said, he had a pretty solid year: 51 tackles, three picks, 17 pass deflections. That's not a bad year, um, you know, at all. And, and, again, I think he can really provide, uh, you know, a, a nice number two corner for our secondary that we've been looking for for a while. It's just the consistency issues with him concern me a little bit. But the talent's definitely there. And I think if, if Coach Del Rio and Coach Fox can, can kind of get, you know, uh, all they can out of him and, and get him to, to play – uh, game in and game out with the same effort and, and get him to play on a consistent uh, level week in and week out. I think we got a, a steal here in Dominique Rogers Camardi. So excited to 
to have him on board. I think he's a nice addition to our secondary. I definitely think he's an upgrade, um, you know, in our secondary and, and, and gives us a, a nice number two corner. That we just hope uh, that he can live up to expectations and, and play, uh, you know, good on a consistent basis next season. Last addition I'm going to talk about that we made last week during free agency. I believe this was actually the first player we signed. Uh, we were able to add guard Luis Vasquez from San Diego. We send, uh, signed him to a four-year, $23.5 million deal. He's only 25 years old again, and another solid young player. Uh, this is a guy that I think is one of the, the better additions that we made that really isn't getting talked about. I think he definitely uh, bolsters our interior offensive line. You're getting a guy that is, is a big, physical, powerful uh, blocker. He gives us a physical presence, which you like seeing, adds a physical presence to our offensive line. He's probably going to start at right guard for us next season because there's some injury, injury issues with Chris Cooper. And he gives us some size up front. He's 335 pounds, not a small man by any means. And uh, again, you like the, the physicalness uh, that he's going to add, that physical presence that he's going to add to our offense line. This is a guy that's one of the better uh, pass protecting uh, guards in football today. And, uh, you know, again, is going to be, I think, a productive starter for us day one at right guard and uh, bolsters up our offensive line. Not only adds that physical presence that we need up front, but also gives us a guy that's been a productive player who's young, still has a ton of upside and uh, gives us more depth, which we desperately need at the offensive line spot. Now, real quick, before I end this video, I just want to touch on the whole Elvis Doomerville situation and what happened there. Uh, if you haven't heard by now, we did release Elvis Doomerville, apparently with some miscommunications between uh, our front office people and Elvis Doomerville's agent and representatives, and I guess he agreed to take a pay cut from $12 million to $8 million, but his agent didn't get the facts in in time, and he ended up firing his agent because of it. I mean, just a, uh, you know, a real terrible situation, real unfortunate situation sounds like a, a lot of miscommunication there and, and to see us have to to, to release a guy like Doomerville re release a player of his caliber over something that stupid and that silly uh, really is disappointing so be interesting to see you know what happens there there's been reports that maybe the Broncos and Doomerville can uh, you know come to agreement on a one-year deal but there was a report today on NFL.com that we had offered Elvis Doomerville a contract and he's he was very underwhelmed by it so it doesn't look like he's going to be com coming back which is unfortunate. Apparently we have uh, you know a couple free agency visits set up with Dwight Freeney and John Habraham uh, so maybe we can you know add one of those guys and help replace Doomerville maybe look in the draft um, for a pass rusher. Just a real unfortunate situation. I think uh, you definitely can pass the blame around, but it definitely sounds like a lot of the blame should be put on Elvis Doomerville's agent, who eventually was fired by Doomerville. So just, uh, again, unfortunate situation, but is what it is. Hopefully we can we can uh, find a suitable replacement for Doomerville and um, you know wish him the best of luck, whether he uh, ends up with us or ends up somewhere else. What, what free agent that we signed do you think will make the biggest impact going into next season? And uh, what do you think about the whole Doomerville situation? So that's it for me, guys. Thank you for watching. Thanks for the support. And as always, go Broncos.